as we were like driving up to the fields, I started to get the butterflies. And then I reminded myself that it's just Frisbee. <laughs> it, it's just a game and we're, we're just playing with our friends. have a pre-tournament practice on Thursday the Friday before before nationals it's usually like an hour long um, in the past it's been like we're just gonna walk through the plays that we run um, just to make sure everyone's on the same page about it or whatever and it's been like really boring <laughs> yeah it seems um, like practice for a test kind of yeah yeah exactly yeah um, I mean it's worked but it's, it's it was boring and this year going along with the theme of the year um, it was like I mean we had like these drills that people had to do but then it was like here just like kind of do whatever you want for 25 minutes get loose like if you don't want to play break mark no one's gonna talk to you about it yeah and I mean I rolled out for 20 minutes for yeah sure. so Thursday's practice was all about just getting touches getting warm just feeling it out we got a lot of uh, short reps we got some good marking reps in at 100% got to get a warm-up in which was always nice and then we just did um, some break mark and just got our legs and throws warmed up. So it was pretty good. I guess just repping through just the basics and just feeling comfortable like as a whole team, just like priming ourselves for the weekend pretty much. I was like rolling out. I was like, man, maybe I should be pulling break mark. But like I know that what I'm doing right now is the most beneficial thing for me to be doing <laughs> at this moment. Yeah, for me, I feel like it was more of like getting in like a good mental space for the tournament. Yeah, Three. Here we go, boys. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, so we're gonna start with Yukon this morning. And what we notice is that they really like to push through their cutters. Their handlers are important as release valves, but they like to get it down to their cutters and then attack. Even when they slide into vert or side stack out of their host stack, they do a really nice job of just creating a lot of space for their cutters to continue to work. All right. <laughs> Um, any questions about their tendencies and preferences? Our goals in this game, get them out of their side stack because that's their favorite set to be in. When they're in hoe uh, and startups like that, be able to junk them up with uh, the handlers. When they're in side stack, be able to junk them up with our delta. It's a basic, basic plan, really, really straightforward. Hey guys, remember, this is just the plan for game one, or for, for point one, okay? If, if something isn't exactly how we, we thought it would be, just That's it. Any questions? No. All right. Um, the rest of the time you have to get ready for today's uh, trip to the fields. Uh, we'll see you there. We are leaving here at 7. You need to be at the fields ready for the undefeated huddle at 7.20. Normally what we do is we like go super intense on the film and videos of other teams. And this year it's really cool that we're really just focusing on ourselves. Because we know yeah. what we're good at. Um, and we know just what we can do to adjust to other teams. Right here! Right now! Right here! Right now! Right here! Right here! Right here! Yeah, Panthers! <laughs> Warming up, I just felt so loose, and like everyone else was just like giggling, and like I mean, it's been like that all year, uh, but that was like the biggest difference from this year to last year, and that's like the same thing with like the team culture just being different. You could see that in the warm-ups, and you could see that when we started playing. Um, it was just loose, like. Yeah. It was fun. Hamstring's feeling a little tight. Throwing it out. Feel pretty good though, other than that. I'm ready. I was kind of in a weird place where I was one of the first people at the field and I was throwing ahead of time and 
I should just stop throwing before games because my throws before games are just so bad. Breath on mine. Here we go. Hey, have in lock catch in your teammates because their share is all having it in you, alright? We worked too hard this year for this not to mean anything, alright? Let's take it. Let's go! Let's go, take go, it! Let's go, baby! Hey, oh, 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 champions oh, attack! Come on, Smith. Hey, one team, one pick, alright? Hit all three. One, two, three! Hit! Let's hey, go! Even if we're in red and black, we're still Panthers. Let's go, boys. Oh, D Panthers? Hey, we're D down here. D down here. Freshman year, we had nationals at this field, and uh, it's kind of weird being back. But this whole situation is completely different, um, and I get to play D for the first point, so that's put me in the right mentality for the game. That's where I live, and uh, we're gonna fucking get a break here. Good, to see it, buddy. Crush these fools, Michael. Let's go, baby. Jonah got block. that point block, and then we score in like two, like it was like ridiculously fast. Very fast. And it was just like, well, is this really happening? And then it happened the next point, and I was like, <laughs> okay, wait, <laughs> this could, <laughs> yeah, this is actually happening. Um, and then it just like kept going from there, and I, I wanted to play more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the points were going too fast. The chemistry of our starting D line has been phenomenal this year. It's, it's incredible. And literally, only change for our starting D line just adding Jonah into the mix. Samir has a really good pull, um, and then it hangs for a long, for like ever almost. And then I managed to get a layout block on the centering pass, and we score immediately right after that. And then from there, our energy is up, our our players are up, and we just keep on pounding breaks after break after break. Yeah, that was awesome. It went by so fast. First point, Jonah gets a hand block off of their center handler. Second point, Tang comes down and gets a layout D off their center pass. Like two points in, they completed one pass. Everyone was just firing on all cylinders. I, I think we took half 8 1 or 8 3, but we came out hot. And I think people were just, you know, incredibly stoked to just get, get started. Right. And, and what better way to start that first game against UConn than the block, instant block by Jonah, followed by the layout D by Kevin? You can't just manufacture that energy off of nothing, so. That is definitely something we'll, we'll try to ride for the rest of the tournament, I think. So both of us play on the O-line as cutters, and um, we're talking about injuries before, and I think it really helped me settle in because I was worried about how many points I was gonna get on my legs this weekend. I think they completed maybe one, like a centering pass in the first two points, it was just like I think it was instant eight, blocks. I think it was one completion in the first three, because then on the third point they, 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 they turfed. Usually the nerves for me happened my first point, but by the time we got to the first O point, I, I wasn't even nervous anymore, it was just, I was just excited at that point. Yeah, I feel like I was more out of breath from just screaming, yeah. you know, running onto <laughs> yeah. the field after every point. You know?
I said this to Jimmy. I was like, hey, Jimmy, it's great to be on pit because you never have to play pit on the first day of a tournament. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of their dudes look tired. Um, I mean, maybe it was just me telling myself that. Like, I felt good, and it was, I, wasn't, I wasn't worried about it. It's, it's wonderful having the intensity that we have on this D-line for this team. I mean, it's something that they, they carry so much energy into every game that, you know, as an O-line, we've been suffering from injuries all season and that we've been able to rely on that D-line to, to pick us up. When we get broken, they're always there to, to get us going and, and what a way to start the tournament. It's just like, it just had us, the entire team was settled. The first two points were absolutely ridiculous. I've never seen any team start a game like that. We were super loud on the sidelines and only the rest of the field just kind of disappeared. It was just our field encapsulated in the sound that we were making between our two sidelines. Um, we were up 8-1, big and a half. And I'll be honest, I think this is our first in Nationals where we've actually like taken half 8-1 in, in any game. It, it's never been such a blowout. Um, but I think they brought it back to like 10-6 or something like, like that. Yeah. And sometimes when Orlando gets broken, in previous years, I would say that, you know, we start fighting with, amongst each other. Like, the Orlando will start fighting with each other, and maybe D-liners will also check out mentally. But it was so cool this year because even though, like, Orlando got broken a few times, we were always up and having fun and just still being, I um, mean, just yeah. enjoying the moment. The first thing that I want to see more and more of is pole coverage. Pole coverage has gotten us three Ds in this game so far. That is big, that is bad, we got to keep that going. Second thing, when we get them to the break side, which is where they like to be, they are actually struggling right now. And it is because our marks are strong and smart, we are staying tight and we are creating tight underneath windows to that break space. That is a hard spot to throw to if you're tight or low line or even line and you're just hungry on that space like DT was and then he just goes and gets a D, okay? Finally, offensively, let's just make sure that when we're on top of the disc cutting, we do the right thing. So if you're right on top of the disc, you should either be already open for an in cut because you were power cutting, you should be reading the fake and lupa in. And the one thing you should really try to not do is go deep from right on top of the disc, okay? Right on top. We can set up better deep cuts from a little bit of space, okay? That's it. Let's, let's go, baby. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No one survives pit in the second half. No one. No one, no one yeah. survives. Pit yeah. on three. One, two, three. Pit!
in years past we would have gone to like a library and then done like a very in-depth like film session and like gotten like subs or something um, but this year the parents got us food uh, which was great very nice and, um, and the alumni too yeah and the it's alumni helpful um, and instead of like making scouting a big deal we're just like hey just go do whatever you want for 45 we had like an hour we had a long time. because we beat them yeah. so quickly do we go danger yeah Carol Oh! 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 oh, oh, oh. Baby, baby. Big stinky! Oh. 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 Our team just died like three of the girls on their team. And yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> it was good. I mean, we came out really strong, obviously. Getting the first two breaks, or get, getting the breaks so quickly just had our energy up. And we're not normally, I think, a first half team, but the, the ability to, to pick it up from the start was really good, and then we just ran with it. Here comes that boy! 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 Oh shoot, shoot, what up? up? You say oh shoot. Don't say shit. Don't say shit. That was fun because we've never, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen Danger play at Nationals yeah. before. Just because it's always been recovery, scouting. Just work, work, work. Yeah, yeah. Like this is the schedule. We're going to follow it. We're going to do what's best for our bodies. Nationals, only two games in a day, second game of the day. It's going to be exciting to watch. We had like an hour to watch the women's game and then and just like relax and take our time. And then we do that like little scouting like session of uh, Michigan and they're just like, it's just like might be a slightly better version of UConn. Yeah. Um, it's like, okay, well, nothing changes. It, it's actually kind of hilarious how non-serious we are on the line. You know, we just we do like the three, two, one clap and then we all just like purposely clap at different times. Um. The whole team just feels more relaxed and less flustered by the weight of the moment. And yeah. I, th I think that's really going to help. Hopefully later in this tournament, if we reach later stages, I think, you know what, I'm just here playing Frisbee with a lot of friends. Yeah, I, I, th I think Carl put it best. He said he was like nervous in the car and just anticipating what's to come. And then he realized that it's just, it's just Frisbee with friends. And if that's the mentality, that just fun. If we can have fun this 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 uh, this weekend, then then we'll see success. I mean, this is a special game because we played Michigan on this field three years ago, my freshman year. Um, my brother went to Michigan, and to be honest, I fucking hate this team. Wally, what's your favorite color besides orange? Mm, Orange. Yeah. That, that, that eliminates a huge one. <laughs> I don't know, man. Is it green? Sometimes yeah, it green has to be green. Right? Yeah, green. No, no, no. I'll, I'll go with. I'll go with. I'll go with. Uh, black. Uh, is there like a weird red, black or red, like red? Turf thing with the green? Like when other teams, when teams wear orange and you have to go green, are you like? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, probably, probably green's a second. Yeah, O scored really quickly, which was great. We had me on a, on a very, very good matchup where um, Carl, you know, Michael saw our best defender, Sam, take very tough matchups, which lets, I guess, more players who are good at helping off um, take, I guess, not easy matchups, but matchups that utilize their skills more effectively. And I want my skills just high pressure uh, handling defense, and then we've generated a, a, a backfield turnover right on the end zone line, and I just flipped a quick goal to Saul, who just immediately out and won, because the guy was grabbing him like this. <laughs> and um, it was funny, he was saying that his guy was grabbing him, as soon as they shook him off, the dude fell. He was going up line, just literally the third, just sat in the wind. He's, his, he saw our alumni out in the corner, just tongue stuck out because of that, I think, and just clap caught it. And I, can like, and I can like see him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just just so soft.
think the pressure we've been applying has been just you know, incredible. Um, the handler defense on this team is just like crushing. We were expecting a grinder every game. They're a very physical team, good fundamentals, so we knew it would be a fight. We actually came out just as powerfully against them as we did against UConn. We ended up taking half, 8-1, right? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. The first half was very similar to the UConn game where we just came down with a lot of pressure. We took half 8-1 in a blur. I think one of our alumni on the sideline said that we took half in 22 minutes. Spirits are very high. Um, I think we were all, I mean, we knew we were capable of it, but I think we're surprising even ourselves with how efficiently we're playing right now. Um, I don't know if our O-line turned it that half, and I don't know how many or how few points our O-line even played, but uh, Things are looking good. That is it, okay? What we're doing right now is perfect. But you need to remember that we are Kellner on the four side handler. Yeah, so I, don't, I don't even know. Times. I mean, it, it literally happened in 25 minutes. So yeah. it's really hard to remember how it played out. Yeah. And now just visualize this. They take that free pass. And now you got Kevin working off a dead handler. And you got a bunch of guys hey, in tight D gaps. Oh. And everyone's oh hungry. My. And we got a mark oh that's perfectly positioned and denying inside breaks and around breaks. And it doesn't even matter anymore. They're stuck. They're maybe going to chuck it back to the middle and punt. And we've got them eaten up. <gasps> that's what we're going to go. Hey, <laughs> hey, let's go get them. Nobody survives a pit second. second. Oh, 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 Go pit on three. One, two, three, pit! It was clearly a tale of two halves because Omec was struggling out the gate in the second half.
came back firing in the second half. They brought two, it to two or three times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was 11-7 at one point. They brought it within four. One that I'm gonna remember from that game for a long time is I think Jack or Dylan threw Thomas a scuba and he dolphin dived and grabbed that thing and the entire sideline erupted. We were a little down. I think that was the last, the second last O point they played. They stopped getting broken after that because that grab was ridiculous. I mean, I just like saw someone who's open and just like hucked it and it was just like, this is definitely going to work, and then I realized as soon as I threw it that it was not a good decision, <laughs> um, even though it was a good throw. <laughs> You can see like nothing developing from the back of the stack. Yeah. Um, the same thing happening over and over again, and nobody's gaining anything from it. And at that point, like someone like just has to take a shot. I don't know if it was their zone, but a lot of the decisions we were making were a little out of the ordinary. We were taking some harder shots and not connecting on them. So I pumped the flick um, and just threw his backhand to stand the wind very well from Michael. I remember just getting super pumped up for that because I have a lot of confidence in my, in my backhand as I'm sure Carl can attest to. Yeah. And it just sat perfectly exactly the way I wanted it to. And after I threw that, I was so stoked. I remember just being so up for that and looking to our line and everyone was just like walking over. I remember you hit that and I was just like walking and I was just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't run at, at you, but. What? At what? It was Carl. I was, I was hyped. Um, there was one play that was, there was a, a quick turn, someone picked it up and got the disc to me and I hear someone yelling my name and Kevin is just streaking downfield or going down when there's no one within 20 yards of him and I just put it to him and it sits a lot better than I thought it would and he, he brings it in.
one fifteen eight, but I was pr- I, I left the second half a little unsatisfied, knowing that it was only seven seven, given we started eight one. Now that we're done for the day, I am now starting to feel how sick I actually am. Are you sick? I drink a lot of water. Uh, water or watered down Gatorade. Um, if you feel like you were a little bit dehydrated today, uh, we're gonna eat as soon as we leave the fields. That's that's a priority. And uh, make sure you're eating healthy foods. Don't eat like the junky foods, like fried foods, um, oily foods, pizza, no bueno. Um, let's do good stuff for our body. Anyone have any questions? I'm gonna pause a popcorn tang. Damn it. Um, he forced so many turns on the backfield today, just doing what he does, playing one and a half defense, and he forced so many miscommunications between the thrower and the reset. He got like a lot of D's that aren't gonna show up on the stat sheet. Get up. I'm gonna fuck what you say. Say something. It's gonna push us through. Kevin's Big gonna stop a tank. Dick tang. Um, those are the idiots that I play on this team with, and they're playing some sort of board games. Um, the really loud one whose voice is probably overtaking this entire interview is the one who's awkwardly looking over right now with his eyebrows raised and his forehead wrinkles. That's Kyle Hartley. That's my roommate. Um, and now they're just kind of looking and waving and Kyle's just being himself, which is a total idiot. I'm probably going to finish this container of blueberries before this is over. First game isn't until 10.30 and we're playing UNC Wilmington and that's going to be a treat. UNCW is always one of the, you know, one of the best teams to play against for us. There's just, there's an innate rivalry that dates much farther back than we've been on the team. It's always going to be intense. I'm trying to not think too much about UNCW. Yeah. I'm more thinking about ourselves and getting ready my own yeah. body. If we go into it with the same mentality um, that we did today, which was like, like this is what our first point plan is, um, and like just win your matchup, just yeah. play well. No, like we have prepared all year, like know that you're good and play like it. Yeah. Like these guys are excellent at the mental game of frisbee. Yeah. They will get in your head and they will stay there. So just don't play their game, play your game. There's a lot of outside talk, and they always like hyping up UNCW against us. Yeah. Sure, we have some history together, but I mean, they're a great team. And our story is always hard work, it's grinding, it's hustling, and it's doing all those things that Pit Ultimate is all about, okay? We did it all day yesterday, we executed, we made tight windows over and over again. Defensively, all we have to do is make tight windows, and we're gonna get the disc, okay? And then we're gonna punch efficiently, intelligently, playing that hydro offense, okay? good to go it's our story it's our time give me all the reports we're ready to roll um but like a lot of the hype around us as rivals i mean i don't really get um i mean i get it i mean i think it's just like a outside narrative to make things more interesting and so i know we're not supposed to like buy into narratives but like that's like the one narrative i let myself buy into a little bit just because it gets me really hyped for the game we've had some ridiculous games with them in the past so i mean it makes sense like some of the best games that Ulti World has filmed have been us against UNCW. The warm up before the Wellington game felt a little sluggish, but not like not anything like bad in a way. It just, I thought you guys looked a little slow coming out, but I thought maybe it was the grass or just some jitters and nerves. But you guys loosened up pretty quick. Hydrator, or it, baby. It's humid out. Could someone just play a fun song I can dance to? Well, so I was in the bathroom actually, but uh, apparently they were like, oh, is it cool if we just go white? You guys want to go dark? Uh, and then Thomas and Carl are just like, nah. And then we won the flip, so now we're in white. Uh, feels good. It's good to get those little ones over them. We're in complete control. All we do is take care of the controllables. One breath, one mind. Here we go. Let's go, baby. Right here, right now. Lock into this spot. One voice out. Let's go, Pittsburgh. Hey, yesterday, our energy to start the day was fucking amazing, all right? Let's create a like vortex with our voices between the sideline and this field. Nothing matters here except this field. Let's be as loud as possible. When we're loud, our defense is fiery. Yeah, let's go, sideline. Hey, I fucking want this. You see this goddamn face? I fucking want this shit. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go, baby. Let's go. This test! Hey, pit on three, pit on three. One, two, three, pit. let's go! Yeah.
they pretty much always have the same strategy, which is they're gonna huck it a lot. Some days it's not gonna work for them, and some days they're gonna hit almost all of them. and he would get it, but there would always be a guy like flying by him. huge huddle like two of their dudes would go up and two of our dudes would go up and then like it would get tipped and then they would like somehow catch the rebound. Yeah, because it's like really hard to defend. They have athletic players, they can throw really far, and you gotta be able to defend that. I'd like to point out that I technically deed Jack Williams. I got switched onto Jack on a roll call, and he went up line, and uh, JD had the disc on the sideline, and Jack pretended he was going to go back to the stack and then kept going more up line into the end zone. JD put it up, and I sort of just went, <laughs> Oh, I remember that. And got a D on it. There were points when we just had like 
just dumb turnovers, like things that we weren't doing in any other game. They had some ridiculous throws that I'm sure a lot of us wouldn't even like conceive throwing. Can we fuck it out? Cause we gon' be up all night, fuck a decaf. You see, I'm a tall thug, yes, I'm a G rap. If you want safe sex, baby, use the knee pad. Freaky with the sticky icky, baby, give me kitty kitty. <clears throat> Killer. It's 8 6, half, we're down by two breaks. We uh, came out a little slow, but we're gonna come back to the second half. No one survives pit second half. Remember this no one survives pit second half. One breath, one mind. Here we go. Let's go, here. Let's go Pittsburgh. In the moment. Just now. That's good. All right. Hey, forget all the expectations you have for this game. Just go out there and have fun. It's, we're here with our teammates. Let's let's fucking enjoy this. And let's fucking play our best. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remember Dylan Best making some incredible plays from that game. On the same point, Dylan had a layout that was called out of bounds, which oh I don't know about that. But then uh, someone else threw a hook to him at the same point and tracked down and laid out and was super hype. And Dylan's 
somewhat awkward <laughs> hype mode where he like kind of gets excited and then like <laughs> he's like mm -mm. You can tell yeah. he's excited, but he's also just like too tired to experience another emotion <laughs> besides fatigue. I feel like I wouldn't have had to lay out for the second one, but I was just so tired. <laughs> Fucking huck thrower, boys. I think the Wilmington game didn't go according to plan because our D-line just seemed off in the first half. They weren't really getting turns and we tried running some zone and their, their zone wasn't really even making them throw more than 10 passes. Michael Lane played really well in that game. Um, he's always just such a good lockdown defender. Fifteen, thirteen. It's a tough break. It's a very good game. We're ready to bring it for the next one. We'll bring it. They played well. They got some calls, and uh, we didn't step up enough. But we're gonna get better, and I think we needed that honestly. And Nick actually gave us a very good speech about how we learned so much from the Wilmington game and we got so much better from it and I think all of us really bought into that. Uh, any questions about those matchups or their tendencies? Awesome. Don't let your teammates drift by adding something that they could drift to. Everyone is going to have trouble with it. It's a hard thing to control. We're all going to do it individually, but you all can make this happen. We're going to work our depth. We're going to be hustling in this game. Expect one-to-one -one rotations or two-to-one -one rotations early in the game. We're going to get our depth rotating. We're going to come hustling. We're going to go get them. Stay in the moment, guys. Trust me. That is the biggest thing we can learn from that last game. We've said it many times. All we want to do is get better with each game. That was the greatest lesson. We got taught that lesson in the best time in this tournament. In pole play, when it's not survive and advance yet. Guess what? Now it's survive and advance, and we're the only team at this tournament that learned that lesson. We're the only ones. Let's learn that lesson. Let's make the difference yeah, now. Yeah, Here we go. Yeah, let's go, Pitt. Yeah, let's go, Pitt. I mean, obviously, nice. you're always from the Look, this is nice. Yeah. Something that doesn't happen at all. This is the best thing in the line, because I see you got caught a couple times here, but something was in the line. Don't run, Phil. What do you mean? Yeah. Chuck still knew it. After a point, let's be the first one. It's okay. Hey, hey, Dylan. <laughs> I think there was kind of a, a very down vibe to the team at that point because I don't think any of us expected to lose that Wilmington game. Um, well now we're playing Texas A&M, so that'll be a good time. 
Yeah, we gotta we gotta win that game. <laughs> We're not really thinking about anything else because Nick won't let us. <laughs> <laughs> Our brains don't go that far. We just gotta get past this game. We got one game left for the day. It's the only game that matters. I need a one dance. I feel one. This is so painful. This is so painful. It's good though. We have to stay present. We have to be in the moment. We have to do it now. Good one, Jonah. Pain, pain for sure. It, but it's it's all good though. It's I need this. Oh! Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, no, it's right there. Right deep in there. Oh boy. I feel like I have like guitar strings. Like really tight guitar strings in my hamstring. Bro, we should get some oxygen. We have like great hey, for the air to Get some O. Yo, if we got some I only o. breathe. Yo, hit me up with that O2. They hit me up with that pure O2. Yeah, why don't we have oxygen tanks on the sidelines? That would be hard. That'd be sick. We pretty much know we have the two locked up, but we're trying to get in the right mental space coming into this uh, potential pre-quarter. Um, keep it on the low. I've talked to Michigan guys. Um, they are throwing their game against Wilmington. Um, so our leadership knows that, but um, the players don't, and we want to come out in this game, use our depth, but still, you know, get our fire back so that we're ready for the pre-quarter that comes up. I learned how to do this last time. One breath, one mind. Let's go, boys. Let's go, Pittsburgh. We're here right now, guys. That's all we can do. You know how many times we beat them this season? It doesn't matter is the answer because we're right here. We're right here. Right here. Let's go, baby. Come on. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Bring the fire. Bring the fire. Come on, boys. Woo! Woo! Carl. Hit on three. One, two, three. Hit! 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 Hit!
we were also just really mentally exhausted mm -hmm. after like sort of just going all in on this UNCW game, not being able to finish the way we wanted. We were all just sort of, yeah, just like dead from, mentally dead from that. At least the O-line, like we played like trash in my opinion. <laughs> Have you ever read the book It by Stephen King? Actually, here, follow me. <laughs> the premise is like Pennywise the clown, and he's like the embodiment of everyone's like worst nightmare. And we're we're this book. We're Pennywise the clown. One, two, three. And now we're gonna All right, for the shade or throw or water.
A&M is a really good team, but I think that's a team that we should beat 10 times out of 10, and we really let them into that game for more than we should have. We are tired, and I don't think we are as focused as we should have been, honestly. he is is actually just inspiring. We ended with three straight breaks after that speech. Mm -hmm. I think Sandman is what it took to close out that game. He gave us a speech and was like, I'm not gonna let you guys take away my last nationals, my last tournament. He was the reason we got those three last breaks in order to win. situation is like oh we lost Wilmington oh we might have Michigan I don't give a fuck what situation we're in we're in the moment we're playing with our fucking brothers the fact that we let them in that game that it was tied was insane it's inexcusable I know it's not a leadership mentality I'm trying to calm down but the fact like we can't have that mentality we will have games where it's like oh we're in pre cores then we have cores and so like fuck that shit focus on what you're doing now play now it was insane Okay? I don't care what the situation was. We should have rolled that team and we we're just being lazy and we have to fight for it. Okay? It's ridiculous. Like Nick said, now we have player go home games. Okay? I have no doubt the rest of the tournament, everyone's going to be eyes on the prize, focused on the task at home. But just give it everything else. Like on the sideline, people like people aren't cheering. We're on the sideline. This, this is my last tournament. Okay? I won't let any of you. Fucking robbed me my last tournament, okay? <laughs> All right, guys. Hell yeah. Hey, I'm coming 100%. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get off me. Together. One, two, three. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
apparently there's no rules on roster limits in college. Okay. They have 37 people on their roster, according to um, the Nationals book. And I think that our approach at the beginning of the game of us almost being more positive to the, than them and being more goofy than them got us up for the game in a way that I, I haven't seen us do quite to that degree in the past. Jackie is so ripped, it's until it stop. <laughs> One, two, three, fire! Max Thompson got that like disgusting. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, what what happened? Then That's, when he yeah. left his feet, I was like, <laughs> oh my god. where they worked backwards for a really long yeah. time and it was awesome. <laughs> We were able to like out energy Auburn, which they're supposedly like the they have the most energy of any team that was supposed to be here. And I thought we beat them. We made their 37 person sideline seem like a five person sideline. Mm -hmm.
all of the defensive switches and poaches and slushes, all of those things that we put in place, really put them in tough places while they were on offense. They made their cutters run forever and it was very visible that they were so tired. But Auburn always like comes to these tournaments and nationals and they're always good for like one or two upsets because just their energy, they like ride on that and they, they like beat these really beat good Colorado. teams consistently. Beat um, us last even though, year. Yeah, they beat us last year. And you don't think of them as like one of those high-end teams, but they, they can play with anybody, honestly, when yeah. they're playing their best. Strategically, that game though, I think we went in semi-blind because we didn't have a lot of scouting on Auburn and we didn't run a scouting or a film session on them before. I don't think it hurt us. I don't know if it helped not knowing, but I think we just went in and like picked good matchups right off the first point and then tried to run with those. It was definitely different not having like a, a scouting session before. None of us are tired. None of us will be tired for the rest of the weekend. Who's tired? No, no, no one. One, two, three. One, two, three. Hey. We kind of just kept them swinging back and forth until we could get a D.
Good game, game over! Wait, wait, what does it, it say? It says, after pre-quarters, there's Cora! It's so hard to come back from a game that has low energy to like bringing the kind of energy we had this game. And we need to harness that and realize that we have that and we can always do that. Because yeah. that is so hard to do and we are so capable of that and we proved that. We are not going to be stopped from tired legs. We are never going to think for one second or acknowledge that feeling that our legs are tired. We push through, we keep fighting. Let your body break into fucking pieces if you have to. We never stop running. It was more like symbolic for us to, to win it, um, especially that way. Because, you know, we talk so much about strategy, but when we brought it just back to like, we love playing with each other, we like love being around each other, and we're just like goofy, we're dancing at halftime, we're dancing before the game, <laughs> and all of that and how loud we were for the entire game, the fact that like that's how we won it <coughs> almost seems like we just willed it to happen. I think it brings a lot of people back down to like the, the, the joy they have playing with this team. I really like these black jerseys. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about Ward Street House. Ward. Our house is a shit. <laughs> Hearing that we had UMass in the quarters was, I think, pretty exciting for everyone. I think everyone was like, oh, oh heck yeah, Ooh. we get another chance at these boys. And I think we're going to go into that game fresh, having fun, and feeling really confident about our play. They're Especially not. if we wear the black and red. <laughs> yeah. Matt mentioned Gosh. that all we do is like talk about ultimate. Jackie has been a great presence since day one. It's like as soon as Jackie was living with all of us, he like he embraced all of our personalities. And although we gave him a lot of shit <laughs> for everything, it's, it's been great how much he embraces all of it. The the fact that he became our manager in the fall just like decided to jump into one of our cars and drive down to Georgia with us for CCC. And he was like filming alone on top of the, the, the parking garage, right? Yeah, right and right just right. yelling, it was like he was like so into it. There's, we we like it. literally have film of him like reaching over like, yes, Pit, yes, Pit, go. <laughs> that we cannot be too far ahead of ourselves. And we know what that does to us. We also know we can't be too far behind or too far thinking about the past. Once we get to the fields, we're just trying to stay in the moment, not think too hard about um, what's gonna come next, but just get like mentally ready. And like, like I felt good. Three hours, just for those three hours. And enjoy them, and battle in them, and work hard, go to war, and do all the things we've been practicing, and then it'll be over. Everything that you're gonna do in your life is impermanent in some way. A lot of people fixate and say those things like, oh man, we gotta take advantage of the time, we gotta worry about the impermanence, because they think that things will be permanent, okay? They think that they will last. We have three hours for this three hours. Let's go get it, okay? The drive over. Very routine. I mean, we've done it. At least I've done it. My car, I've done it so many times. Yeah. We know what that feeling's like. Get to the fields, warm up, all routine. And this year it was pretty fun. I mean, we started dancing, getting loose after we got it. Y'all were in the gym in the fall. Yeah. Oh, right. Hey, let's lock it up. Lock it up. Lock it up. Right here. Right now. Right here. Right now. Right here. Right now. Getting ready. Uh, debating whether or not to just like offer up we go black and they can choose if they want to pull a receive or which end. Uh, right now it feels like the black jerseys might be the most important thing in the world. This is icy hot. This is how I will get through this game. I feel pretty good. I'm hurting but uh, that's kind of why you come here. It's like every single national that I've gone through by the end of it you're like pushing some muscle or some injury like way past the point that you should be but it, it's like the only option really so hopefully it holds up but just trying to get ready to go. Tell the camera how you feeling man. Feeling pretty good honestly. Just want to get a little more stretchy on the, uh, for the game. Feeling good for the game? Feeling pretty good for the game. Big game. Nothing bigger than quarters baby. At the very end of warmest we did the tad drill um, and I just like I was going at those frisbees and I could see a lot of every single person 
learning all year how to lay out and everyone was just laying out and just like you could just feel the energy you could feel how locked in everybody was i was ready i can't speak for everybody else but it seemed that we were ready hey just a couple reminders before we get into this um you know they're a bird stack team they come hoe we're in double slush get to a sideline we're going to force backhand pretty much uh, the entire game with our D-line. Just keep that in mind. We might switch to FM at times. We might adjust. Um, our real goal is to get it in the hands of the All right? And let them beat, it, beat us. Okay? One breath, one mind. As soon as they got broken, I knew it was going to be a battle. At the beginning of the game, we O-line got broken, um, and then they got, I think they went up three breaks or something. Even though the O-line got broken a few times, every defensive point we were on, uh, Xerxes, you could feel the pressure mounting yeah, on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they got lucky on a few. Like, there was that one that uh, DT just like hits and just floats back up and then they catch in the goal.
offense though, he is very hard to cover. He's so fast, very deceptive too. And there's one play where he was coming back for a disc, and I had slid in a perfect position, I think, to make a play on a dumps, and they threw a dump a little bit behind. And immediately, as soon as I saw that, I jumped the lane and got a layout block on him, and that was sweet for me. When Dogen went on for that first, the first time that Dogen went on, and um, Ben, my little brother, got he he got uh, he got that D. I didn't really see it, but like I saw like the disc on the ground, and then we ended up punching it in, and then um, we were on the line, and like he was super hyped. He was walking away. We needed one more. We needed one more, and. Uh, Nick called him on, or Marcus or something. I'm sorry, I need to interrupt. <laughs> ben gets called back on, and I started crying a little. I started tearing up. To be on a line with my brother, when it matters, like, the most, um, it was heavy. Um, and I, I just, I was really, really proud of him. We just took half, uh, we went down a couple breaks in the beginning, and we were able to bring it back. There's uh, a lot of energy, a lot of fight on the sideline, a lot of fight on the field. Let it go. 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 First thing, just a reminder, vertical cuts are winning. Vertical cuts are gaining separation. You're loosening them up, and then you're taking the yardage you want. Hey, let's keep having fun. Remember that positive energy from Auburn? That was so much fun. I don't care the severity of the game. It should always be that fun. Well, finally, the rest of the team bought into this whole 0-0 concept. I've been preaching it all year long, and finally one of the coaches is like, it's 0-0 at the start of the second half. And I'm like, duh. On, at least five. Eight, seven. Um. I think they're gonna have to earn it. Um, from what I saw in the first half, they're gonna trade blows. I think it's gonna come down to 16 14 pick. One, two, three, pick! Well, I, I honestly, I think the halftime saved them. All of our energy was up. 
and like we broke for half, right? And it was just like, holy crap, we were down three breaks, we broke for half, we got this, like, we're going to keep the pressure on. And then it was like, half time just happened. It, like, I, my legs got like a little stiff. And then the first point, um, those first like three, like four points out of half were just like low pressure from both teams on D. Yeah. The game kind of got into a lull. At that point, it was like, oh God, like, we're not applying the pressure that we should be. As soon as um, we got broken, for them to go up 12-11, Tang comes up to me and he's like, we're gonna get on that next point and I'm gonna throw you a backhand and you're gonna score. And I was like, yeah you are. Yeah, Mike caught that in the end zone and it was like a pick call, a pick call or something.
and then it, we ended up like just like a short turnover um, and they worked up the field. They just like were killing us with uplines and like little like dinky handler shit that they kept gaining yards with. And then Jack got hurt, I got in, and then they scored. And, um, and, and it was over. It, it's kind of settled in, and I feel great, honestly. I'm, this team has been incredible all year long. That last point was not important. It was not indicative of my time at Pitt, of this team. Um, this year, we played our asses off. You could see every single one on that field pushing it to the limit, and we played our hearts out. Every year, it's almost like waking from a dream. After nationals, I mean, you play your hardest, and after that final loss, you wake up and you think back on that dream, and you just, you know, you remember it. And it feels like something that you can almost touch. It's, it's tangible, but it's fleeting. You just want to try to hold on to that dream for as long as possible until reality hits. What I would say, and I really want you to leave with this lesson, whether it's in relationships that you build with people, with family, at work, you're going to have a lot of times in your life where you're going to want something back or be like overthinking something that happened before and what you could have done differently. You can take a lesson from that thing. You can go get better at that throw, or next time you get a chance to do something, you can go get better at it. But you cannot, you will not, ever be able to fix something that's in the past. And if you fixate on that for too long, it's rather than setting yourself up to do right in the future, okay, and in the present, it will eat you up, all right? Just like it's probably eating some of us right now. And I really hope in this microcosm of life that is sport and this team, that you take that lesson and you don't ever let anything eat you up. And you find a way to grow. That's what all of us are gonna do out of this. It's a beautiful season. We're not gonna wallow in it. We're proud of what we did. Every year we set out to be a championship level team. We're a championship level team. End of story. Yeah, I'm gonna say it again. Reserve. Let's go drink no some fucking line and couples. Let's go drink some fucking line and couples because we're men. Because we're men. Line and couples because we're men. Suicide tonight. Line and couples because we're men. Hit on three. One, two, three. Pit. <laughs>